Hello, I am Katrick. I am a moderator on Skyra.com forums, the makers of Construct2. I'm an indie game maker, game designer enthusiast, and today I am making this tutorial video for Game Dev Touch Plus. We will be making a Pong clone in this video. Let's just look at what the final game will look like. It's not actually finished. We will go on with it in the tutorial. You select the controls for the blue pad and the red pad actually. It's so the arrows, up and down arrows, and the artificial intelligence. You can cycle through the controls and assign them as you like. Keys are S and X. The artificial intelligence is just pretty basic. It's just following the ball on the Y level. And when you play, the goal is to send the ball out of the screen beyond the pad. Like now, it would score points. As you can see, I have now one point in blue. And the session for now, for debugging purposes, just end on two points scored. The game is won with two points. Although the artificial intelligence is pretty basic, as you can see, it is just enough. It's following, basically. And the only way to really win is to take some risks and play on the angle of rebound. Not there yet. This can be found later and rebuilt for the f so that the final game is actually a bit more interesting and challenging. Although this angle seems to be okay. I shall score. Here it is. And you are then asked to play again or to change the controls. Play again will use the same settings. So we'll use the arrows and the artificial intelligence. And you can change the controls going back to the first screen and cycle through the controls. Here it is. I've been clicking on New in the menu file. As you can see, store single project. Store project in single file as a capex. You create the project and it gives you this. You have a new project. We are going to change a few things from its properties. So we will name it Pong. You can put your name, even if uh, through this tutorial I am the author, but never mind. The window size, uh, it's actually the little dots, little uh, lines you can see there, which are um, the um, output size we are going to see, you can see. Here, it's the equivalent. So our layout, which is the rest here, all this white space, is at the moment too big. We are going to set it to the same size. And so it gives you us a very single and very put size for our project. We will now be adding objects that we will use. We are going to add some sprites, as you can see. So here, I have a default image in here that you won't have. You will have normally uh, 128 by 128 blank picture. That's because I modified the default image dot PNG in the folder where C2 is installed 
it's a, it's an interesting trick but for now I will have to erase as you can see eraser erase this image if you hold the control key and move the mouse wheel you know you see you can zoom and you have here at the bottom the percentage of move I will fill with black color just like that uh, we'll also resize because now it's 64 by 64 and I actually only need 16 by 16 and I will change the origin point which is kind of the X and Y positions it refers to this point if you see in a hundred percent it's in the middle you can see there 8 and 8 in our 16 by 16 image the collision polygon is also an important tool you will have to set for your sprites and textures it will be the square of collision you can add points so add point or even double clicking between points you can delete delete the points or even use the delete key and you can if you want modify but here the square uh, actually the bounding box it the same is pretty much what we need and here it is we can rename in the properties and make it name it wall we will add a behavior which is a solid behavior and we'll just put the size at 640 now you can see the wall is on the top holding down the control key and drag dropping you create a new instance of the wall and put it on the back at the bottom actually here it is we have two bounds which will be the walls against which the ball will just go and uh, rebound because of the solid behavior and as the ball once more new sprite when you double click there is an, uh, another I will see I will uh, show you so once again I am erasing the resizing I need about the same and press the 5 key on the numeric keyboard to put it in the middle or set directly the position there you close the image editor and now it's good you add behavior the ball is to move alone so we add the bullet behavior speed will be 225 it will bounce of solids you can see there I'll show you right bounce of solids but I don't want it to set the angle actually it's this angle there like if you put uh, you can see the angle has moved and I don't want the bullet behavior to change th this angle the ball will stay the same in the same turn of the time if I just go there if I make a preview you can see it bounces and it goes out of the screen right now we'll add some pads 
another time a sprite as I said I was going to show you you can add new objects like this right click on object types in which you can see our objects are already stocked sprite by the way I'm going to rena rename to ball so object types insert new object it opens the same. You can see I have some more plugins than your normal version. It's third part plugins. It's not necessarily useful. You can really do a lot of games with only the built in plugins. It's more than enough. I'm going to show you another way you are not forced to draw your textures you can open here I have a folder in which I have some placeholder graphics and I will just open and as you can see the origin point and the image itself is resized automatically you don't need to do anything that's pretty cool and for the pads I actually I want to have two frames. The second one will be red and for that to work the speed of the animation is to be set to zero. This way I'm going to have a 48 by 8 oops it's actually 16 by 48 here it is. This is my pad. And uh, I will put a variable so that it's easier to pick and know what pad I'm dealing with at the moment. Player 0 will be the left pad. And once again, I will create a new instance holding down the control key, drag dropping. I will change the angle there. It can be useful later. Player set to 1. It's not the same pad. And initial frame to 1 also. So you have the f same animation as you can see there. Frame 1 is a red one. Frame 0 is the blue one. Initial frame 0 is a blue one. Initial frame 1 is the red one. We also need, you can see I have two instances. I will add a behavior now. An 8 direction behavior. And you can see that even the second instance also has it. But, if I, so I'm um, changed the property directions to up and down because I only want the pad to go up and down you can see it's not the same there so I could have two instances with different properties for the same behavior it's pretty tricky sometimes it it's interesting sometimes it's not I don't want the angle to be set and I don't want the default controls to move those objects. Same for this one. What can be done there when you have several instances? I will just delete this instance. You see I have up and down etc. I make a new instance by holding down the control key and there the properties are the same. They are copied cop directly. Turn it. And so now it's a bit more interesting. And you can see if I just go yeah. I forgot. <laughs> I need to add a solid of course a solid behavior to the pads too. And there it is. You see it rebounds automatically. And if I 
touch anything on my keyboard as you might here it's not moving but it's normal it's what's expected so I will change here player to one so that I will be able to pick it later and I will add a new plugin in the input a keyboard plugin and now we are going to have and add some code because as we set the de default controls to no we have no way for now to move the pad so in the event sheet right click add event or you can click right here and add an event and it's an event of the keyboard because I want on a key down, key is down and I want the up arrow to be down and I will right click add another condition I want to only deal with the first pad the blue one which is player zero so I will compare instance variable player zero this means that when the up arrow will be down so you have pressed and the key is still down and it will also only apply the actions to the pad which the instance variable player is equal to zero so our first pad there this one the blue one and I want to make some action in simulate control and I want it to go up and if I test quickly now I can go up but I can't go down and going up you can see the pad won't go further than the solid wall up there and like for instances you can clone uh, copy paste your events by holding down the control key and drag dropping the heaven the event and I will just modify this one with the down arrow down and I want it to go down if I preview again I can go up and down pretty cool but now I would like the red pad to also move but the red pad is supposed to be the um, artificial intelligence so far so it will be it's not a, a control from the user which will make it move so I will add an event I will again compare but this time player has to be one this way I'm sure it will pick and the actions will only apply to the red pad the one with player is equal to one if you have several instances for example just for the test you know I have two instances with the one both instances will be picked it's not very interesting so far for our program but it will be useful for you later I'll just delete this instance so I will add a sub event and I will compare the Y position of the red pad and when it is less or equal less or equal means for the Y level Y is zero is at the top top and the more you go down the bigger the y number is so if it is less or equal ball dot y or i could have went there ball and selected ball y as you can see but here it is useless if it's less or equal which means it's up in regards to the position the actual position of the ball 
I want the pad to simulate a control and go down. But at the same time, actually I don't want less or equal, I just want less. And I will copy, paste, and as you can see I've moved down and it's another sub-event. This time, if it's greater, which means that the ball is up in regards to the pad position, I want it to go up. And if I press F5 to preview my project, here it doesn't move, obviously, but if I change the angle of the ball, you can see the pad is following the ball. It's, f as showed earlier, very basic, but it's working. And now you can imagine the ball is outside of the screen and even the AI pad is blocked by the solid walls. It's pretty interesting. So last thing for now, when the ball is outside of the layout, so I will add an event ball and is outside of the layout, I will reposition the ball set position in the middle of the screen. And right now you can see so I will change the angle. Oops you've seen it. So far we have our working prototype and now we will add some scores because the original and actually a lot of the versions of Pong that have came since will have um, a game of several points pretty much like tennis. It's kind of a sport game. So to get and keep the scores uh, I will add another instance variable to the pad which will be conveniently named score. And as you can see the number and the variable is also added to the other instance automatically. The instance variable variable and the behaviors are directly connected to the object type, not to the specific instances. And we will want to add a new plugin, a text this time, and rename it text score. And each, I will have two, two of those, and each one is going to reflect the score of the pad it's working for. So I will just have there change the color of the text. I will change also so that it's centered, which is always pretty cool, and change the font. Here is it's in French because I'm French. If you haven't noticed yet. And so I will put it in bold and 14. TXT score. And I will add a variable to and name it player. And use the same way that, uh, as for the pads. I will make a new instance. Control drag drop. Make sure it's on the same Y level. It's 124 and change the color to red and change the player to 1. And to have a quick example I will add a new event in the system which holds pretty much um, events you will use very often and which are common and global to your project. So for example here on start of layout, which will only happen once because it has the little green arrow, it's a trigger. It means the event only happens once, uh, contrary to the other events, which can be read and can be performed each ticks. So on start of layout, and I will add an other condition takes this call, compare it as variable, and 
I want it to pad dot player once again could have gone there and here so this means that it will pick the text txt score which value player is equal to pad dot player and actually this very simple condition will allow us to treat both the um, both both text scores and pads at the same time because here what I want is text score set text to pad score and this will do the trick and to prove it I will just go there and modify the score and set it to 15 and if I just press F5 here you can see 0 because our pad bl our blue pad score was 0 and the red pad score was to 15 and it's working so that's pretty cool but it also means at the moment that the scores are only displayed once on start of the layout so I will change back the score to 0 and we will go and modify a bit it's there in the outside layout actually first I will need to add a new sprite object I will add a new texture this yellow pale it's not very in important because I will put it outside of the layout there and I want it to be nope silly me here it is and put so I will call that area and add another player but this time and I'm making a new instance putting it there and contrary to the pad and the text I will modify and put the player 1 on the left and the player 0 to the right and I will show you right now why it's because I will add another condition actually I would just modify I don't want the ball to be outside of the layout I want when the ball is in collision with the area so ball and it's on collision with area uh, and what I want there is to add another condition and set and select the pad player which is equal to area dot player and there I want to reposition the ball I will also modify the angle of motion contrary to the angle of the object type itself the angle of motion is just the applied to the bullets and there I will put it random which is a system expression and 360 this means that anytime we will have our ball on collision with an area it will be repositioned and the, sa the um, angle it's going will be different and it will be randomized and I also want the pad and I want to add some score I want to add one point to the score and as here if the ball hits this area the blue player is to score one point so that's why I'm setting the player zero and the opposite there it's player one it's the red player which is to score points and so there 
I will change the start of layout for every tick. And actually, you don't even need that condition. Just setting text takes this call will happen every tick. As you can see, and I will show you right now. Not yet. Let it go. Player has set one score, and you can see the angle is changing. And the red player has already scored two points because it went two times behind my pad. With this angle, I should score one point. It's going to be a bit long, but it's working. It's just to show. And you can see that it's pretty much at, at the moment the only way to beat the pad to have a very small angle and here I have scored one point it's working as we want so now we want to add the choice for the user to choose the control for each pad as you may remember from the video beginning and I will go so in the layers tab add a new layer name it select lay I, uh, it's a personal convention I use a lay prefix or suffix at the beginning or the end of the name for layer for a layer so I always remember what what it is and if not I make a new plugin, new object, a text. Name it takes the control. Add an instance variable play as we used so far. And just modify the color. Name right now it's good. Making a new instance. Checking the Y level, so it's aligned the same way. Change the color. Change the alignment. And the player. Rename it Text Select. and to 40 this allows us to begin in the very middle of the Y and add a new instance variable named control this time it's a text variable and as a text variable I haven't put an initial value because each instance will have a different value there I will put arrow with the cap and AI I also need to add a mouse it's already I've already put it in my project I forgot in the input normally I'll just show you so to delete an object type from your project you need to delete it from the object types folder I mean just deleting it in the layout view is not enough you will just delete the instance but the object type is still a part of your project so there I'm sure I'm deleting it it's good so add and mouth there it is and because I want to be able to click those texts and the mouse input object is what allows me to do so also I've put so a new layer and if you see there I will go in I'm just clicking and it hides the content of the layer for the layer zero but it's only in the editor if you preview if you like hide here and preview your project still the element there 
will appear and as you can notice also it's moving and we have our text selection text which are also visible also the ball is moving so now we are going to make some changes into the event sheet and it's going to be a bit tricky because now what we want to do is to set a new state in our proje project that is to say when the player launches the game executes it it begins as a state of I'm awaiting for the user controls I don't want the ball to move I don't want the user to be able to control the pad etc I don't want the artificial intelligence pad to move so we will have to do some reorganize reorganization in our current project to do so I will add a group and this will na be named human controls it's active on start for now I will just move it up and I will make those two events a sub event of this group meaning that if I I, I will show la you later I will keep it for later I will add a new group AE controls AI controls put it there and here it is but what I want now to do is not pick because uh, is not pick thanks to the instance variable player but accordingly to the controls and so as it is text I have to put quotes and AI so now the pad is going to be picked thanks to the value of the control variable and when the control are set to AI then I know it's the artificial intelligence and same here I will put not the player but the control and arrow same here and delete could have modified um, just make sure arrow I would name it arrows it's better and so modify it it's not modified because it's a um, string value it's not something that is stored into C2 and that is taken into account into the logic of the project or the game it's a value that you as developer set and so when it's between quotes you have to be sure that the values are really equivalent so add the S and have the cap at the beginning of the word arrows arrows so as I said I will now add a global variable it's a variable that you set in event sheets and that is not attached to a specific instance or a specific layout you can use it over all your projects have access and modify this variable and I will name it game state I will make it text and the initial value is going to be game start no, I could just oh, I don't need to add the quotes there I would just name it start after all I don't add a description there but it's really useful generally the state of our game and when I have some variable like that I will put into parentheses the different values it can have so start in game and uh, game over And as you can see, it's good for memory, and I'm still I can uh, I can remember how it works. So I will now add event, uh, and I will add another time on start of layout because now on start of layout, there are several things I want to do. I want to hide the scores. So I will set invisible, and as I haven't picked 
any specific instance, it will apply to all instances. So all takes test calls, both would be hidden. I also want the group human control, same name, same controls, same name and uh, case sensitive to be de deactivated and same for actions you can also select con old control key down and drag drop to clone the action and there I want it for the AI controls so now it means that on start of layout I will hide the scores and I will prevent the user from modifying uh, the mm, fr from moving the pad and so for the artificial intelligence and last thing I want the ball speed to be zero I don't want it to move there it is so text text nice this will go there now I want to add another event mouse on object clicked and left click on text select I will move it there because it's uh, the organization of your event sheet has to be also logical you know it's uh, construct to read the event sheet from top to bottom and uh, I like to put my on start of layout event as number one because it's just the first thing that is done for the layout and for as far as logic and code is goes but I also remember that it's only read once. This one will only happen when the left button of the mouse is clicked and when the cursor cursor of the mouse is over the text select object. And when I click it, I want... Uh, I forgot something. I will add there another condition. I will leave there. I will go back to that. I will use the quite the same trick as earlier with the txt score with the txt select. Compare instance variable player pad dot player down and there txt select set text and I want it to be the pad controls control here it is so on start of our project now you see the value the current value and the current system of control that is chosen is displayed and now when I select I click on the text I want to cycle through the three possible controls that is to say arrows, keys and uh, artificial intelligence. So to do that I will add a sub event. Um, first I will add another condition and I will pick the pad accordingly player to the text select player value. As the first instance to be selected uh, is text select text select and this is this instance that will then allow us to pick the correct pad and now as a sub event if pad control is equal to arrows which is our current control for the blue pad I want to modify the control value to keys and I also want the text select and it will be only the instance that we choose Point 
dot control. I will continue. I will clone this event, but I will also add another condition system else. There you can see it's in red, it's not valid, but if we move it up, because in the conditions, the order of the conditions is the same as the order of the event, and it's read from top to bottom. So it means there that the previous event did not execute, the conditions were false, and so we go back to this one, and else controls are keys. We want then to modify to AI. And the last one, to cycle, if it is AI, I want it to become the arrows. And we're going to check in. You can see it cycles as I click, and it does the same on the red pad too. And also, what you see displayed there is the value of the pad itself, pad.control instance variable. And so now, I will need to add a new object. It's a button. It's mostly to show you uh, different plugins because obviously what you would like to have in a um, true game, if I, if I may say, is to have rather a sprite as a button and so you would use the same condition mouse on, uh, on the object clicked. But the interest with the button is that is already have a condition on clicked which is independent from the mouse plugin it means that even if in your project you don't have a mouse plugin you can still have the opportunity to click on the button and this button there I will rename and I will modify it. its button play its play And I want it to be clicked, but I also need to prevent a possible bug by making sure that the layer select lay is visible, which means that the button won't be displayed if the layer is invisible, but it won't be able to be clicked also, even if you are already in game. And when you click, I want then the text scores to be displayed. So I'll set them to visible. And I want to hide the layer select layer. So you can see I'm using the name directly of the layer, but I could use the number. And just put a 1 there and it would work. But the fact of using the name itself is that if I choose to modify the order, the code still works. It still refers to the correct layer, which is something quite useful also. Layer select layer. And so what I will need also is to change the value of game state as in game. And I also want now the player to be able to control and the, as, uh, the same for the artificial intelligence. Activity, activate. And so now I also need to add some event because it's for the keys. So I want the S there and the control value to be keys and same there with X. I choose S and X because I have an other keyboard. 
uh, and so S and X are positioned at the same uh, the same way on QWERTY and other T keyboards. For international players like myself, for example, it's r it's always nice to see the developer uh, paying paying attention to this kind of things. A lot of games are just W A S D which is quite of awkward on an other keyboard. The A key is the very first on the top left and the W key is on the at the bottom on the third row, the the row of the bottom. And so it's actually awkward because to move your player up you are kind of pushing the key that is at the bottom. Uh, logically it's uh, it's quite confusing and I always appreciate the developers that put some international keys and uh, in p pay attention in their input. It's al always enjoyable. And so now, if I'm not mistaken, it should work. So let's say arrows keys. I will try the keys for change, uh, artificial intelligence, and play. Okay, I forgot to put some movement, but... Uh, and the keys... No, it's not working as it should. Alright, we have a bug. <laughs> okay, so the first bug is that select lay is not supposed to be visible, but invisible. This, a quick check and it's working. Okay, arrows are working as wanted. Here, first I need to put it to down. If I set here. Okay, now it's working as it meant to. So, the last thing to add is set a random angle of motion 360 and set the speed to 225 and actually put first the speed before setting the angle of motion if you set an angle of motion when the bullet speed is equal to zero the angle of motion won't be registered and so now now it does work yes Fine, so last thing, so it's scoring, right? But last thing we need to do is to add a, a new s state to our game, which is actually the game over st set state, excuse me. So we will have to check for the score. And I will put it to for now I will put it to two, like in the introduction of this video, because it will be easier to quickly check if everything is working. So when any pad score value is equal to two, we want to change the game state. Set it to game over and we also want to deactivate the controls we want also the bullet to stop and we will have to make a new layer game overlay in which we will still have buttons to play again with the same settings and another one to sh change controls change controls 
N. Here it is. But now I need to set the game overlay as invisible or else it will be visible from the from the start of the game which is what I don't want. So set visible game overlay and set it to invisible. Now nah, it's good. Also I want it to be visible when the score is good. And so now it's expecting the player to either click play again or click change controls. So we will add an event and put on play on clicked but I will also add another condition as the previous button to make sure that the layer is visible. Game over lay. And when I just want to click this, I pretty much just want there. Yet I want in each pad to change the score value to zero. I want the bullet speed and the angle of motion and everything. There, I'm pretty much copying the same events because that's actually what I want and it's what works and I would just have there to set the layer game over lay to invisible and everything should work I will just add also a ball set position put it right again in the middle and same for pads actually on the Y 240 and so we are going to quickly test it uh, rose play I will let it score two points first point second point incoming there and if I play again it's not working nice why still another bug it's not button play of course it's button play again and as you can see you can go back and change quickly play let's have another time two points scored yes it works and play again night does the job fine and so I will just move that back and change controls on clicked is visible and actually there I will quite not use so much I will rather restart the layout then restart layout because it will then come back from the beginning I will make sure also to first reset the global variable so the game start game state will be again equivalent to start and so it will display it will act this uh, this event and it will display the controls selection it's pretty much just restarting the layout and making sure that the global variable is uh, is correct and if i'm checking quickly two points change controls and there I needed to set the layer select lay to visible I should actually just put that in the start of layouts 
because it's part of the logic and it will work as intended. One point, two point, change controls, here it is. And as you can see, the workflow just goes and it works. So yeah, it's pretty much what you need to make your first game in Construct 2.